This time, we'll look at a city where the rich spend their time and money. This city of ideas and imagination is a restless inventor of art and culture. This is a city of ideas and the imagination immersed in history. And you can be sure that you'll receive an equally large chunk of magnificent history. Absolutely, this fantastic city is London. London is one of Europe's most iconic cities, with a rich history, incredible architecture, and a unique culture. London has something for everyone, from history and culture to good food and great times. Watch until the end and find out why London is the most livable city in the world. London's finance industry is based in the city of London and Canary Wharf, the two major business districts in London. London is one of the preeminent financial centers of the world as the most important location for international finance. This unique concentration of talents accelerated the transition from the commercial revolution to the industrial revolution. By the end of the 19th century, Britain was the wealthiest of all nations and London a leading financial center. London's largest industry is finance, and its financial exports make it the large contributor to the UK's balance of payments. Around 325,000 people were employed in financial services in London until mid-2007. London has over 480 overseas banks, more than any other city in the world. It is also the world's biggest currency trading center, accounting for some 37% of the $5.1 trillion average daily volume. In terms of stock exchanges, the London Stock Exchange is the second largest stock exchange in Europe after Euronext. As of August 2021, the total market value of all companies trading on the London Stock Exchange stood at approximately 4.55 trillion British pounds. London-based media organizations dramatically outperform Comscore's English language ratings. The two biggest English language newspaper websites in the world are London-based British organizations. The Daily Mail's, Mail Online and The Guardian's website have broken into first and second place. The Pound Sterling Sterling is the fourth most traded currency in the foreign exchange market, after the United States dollar, the euro, and the Japanese yen. And the British pound is the oldest currency in continuous use. London GDP is €801.66 billion Euros in 2017, makes it the biggest urban economy in Europe and one of the major financial centers in the world. In 2019 it had the highest number of ultra-high net worth individuals in Europe and the second highest number of billionaires of any city in Europe after Moscow. Transportation. London has an extensive and developed transport network which includes both private and public services. Journeys made by public transport systems account for 37% of London's journeys, while private services accounted for 36% of journeys, walking 24% and cycling 2%. London's public transport network serves as the central hub for the United Kingdom in rail, air and road transport. Aviation. The metropolitan area of London is served by six international airports and several smaller airports. Together, they make the busiest airport system in the world by passenger numbers and the second busiest by aircraft movements. In 2018, the six airports handled a total of 177,054,819 passengers. The London airports handle over 60% of all the UK's air traffic. The airports serve a total of 14 domestic destinations and 396 international destinations. London Heathrow is a major international airport in London. In 2020, it will be the third busiest airport in the world by international passenger traffic and the third busiest airport in Europe by passenger traffic. Additionally, various other airports also serve London. Underground and DLR. The London Underground, commonly referred to as the Tube, is the oldest and third longest metro system in the world. The system serves 270 stations and was formed from several private companies, including the world's first underground electric line, the City and South London Railway. It dates from 1863. Over 4 million journeys are made every day on the underground network, over 1 billion each year. There are more than 360 railway stations in the London Travelcard zones on an extensive above-ground suburban railway network. South London, particularly, has a high concentration of railways as it has fewer underground lines. Most rail lines terminate around the center of London, running into 18 terminal stations. Clapham Junction is the busiest station in Europe, by the number of trains passing London is the center of the national rail network, with 70% of rail journeys starting or ending in London. 
Like suburban rail services, regional and intercity trains depart from several termini around the city centre, linking London with the rest of Britain. Buses. London's bus network runs 24 hours a day with about 9,300 vehicles, over 675 bus routes, and about 19,000 bus stops. In 2019 the network had over 2 billion commuter trips per year. Since 2010 an average of £1.2 billion is taken in revenue each year. London has one of the largest wheelchair accessible networks in the world. Roads. Although the majority of journeys in central London are made by public transport, car travel is common in the suburbs. The inner ring road, around the city centre, the north and south circular roads, just within the suburbs, and the outer orbital motorway, the M25, just outside the built-up area in most places, encircle the city and are intersected by a number of busy radial routes, but very few motorways penetrate into inner London. The M25 is the second longest ring road motorway in Europe at 188 kilometers long. The A1 and M1 connect London to Leeds and Newcastle and Edinburgh. The Port of London, once the largest in the world, is now only the second largest in the United Kingdom, handling 45 million tons of cargo each year, as of 2009. Tourism. London is one of the leading tourist destinations in the world and in 2015 was ranked as the most visited city in the world with over 18.83 million overnight visitors and had 280 million day trippers. It is also the top city in the world by visitor cross-border spending, estimated at $20.23 billion in 2015. Tourism is one of London's primary industries, employing 700,000 full-time workers in 2016 and contributes £36 billion a year to the economy. The city accounts for 54% of all inbound visitor spending in the UK. There are many museums and art galleries in the London area, the majority of which are free to enter. Many of them are popular places for tourism. In addition to Tate Modern and the National Gallery, notable galleries include Tate Britain and the National Portrait Gallery. London has more than 170 museums. London is an important cultural and historical centre, and museums could not have been missed in this area. If you get to visit this wonderful city you would definitely lose a lot from your trip if you don't stop by one of them. The British Museum, the Imperial War Museum, the British Library and the Wallace Collection are just some of them. Major tourist attractions in London include the Tower of London, Buckingham Palace, Tower Bridge, London Eye, Trafalgar Square, London Aquarium, Madame Tussauds, ZSL London Zoo, London Dungeon and St. Paul's Cathedral and so on. London has four World Heritage Sites, the Tower of London, Kew Gardens, the Palace of Westminster, along with Westminster Abbey and St. Margaret's Church, and the historic settlement in Greenwich, where the Royal Observatory, the line in Greenwich represents the historic prime meridian of the world, whose longitude is defined to be zero degrees. Every place on Earth was measured in terms of its distance east or west from this line. The line itself divided the eastern and western hemispheres of the Earth. Since the late 19th century, the prime meridian at Greenwich has served as the reference line for Greenwich Mean Time, or GMT. If you are in London means you're in the center of the world by time and longitude. Entertainment. Globally the city is one of the big four fashion capitals of the world, and it is the world's third busiest film production center, presents more live comedy than any other city, and has the biggest theater audience of any city in the world. Europe's busiest shopping area is Oxford Street, a shopping street nearly 1 mile, 1.6 kilometers, long, making it the longest shopping street in the UK. Music. London is one of the major classical and popular music capitals of the world and hosts major music corporations, such as Universal Music Group International and Warner Music Group, as well as countless bands, musicians and industry professionals. The city is also home to many orchestras and concert halls, such as the Barbican Arts Centre, the South Bank Centre, Cadogan Hall and the Royal Albert Hall. London's two main opera houses are the Royal Opera House and the London Coliseum. The UK's largest pipe organ is at the Royal Albert Hall. Sports. London's most popular sport is football, and it has six clubs in the English Premier League. From 1924, the original Wembley Stadium was the home of the English national football team. It hosted the 1966 FIFA World Cup final, with England defeating West Germany, and served as the venue for the FA Cup final as well as Rugby League's Challenge Cup final. 
One of London's best-known annual sports competitions is the Wimbledon Tennis Championships, held at the All England Club in the southwestern suburb of Wimbledon. Played in late June to early July, it is the oldest tennis tournament in the world and widely considered the most prestigious. London has two most important international cricket grounds, Lords in St John's Wood and the Oval in Kennington. Lords has hosted four finals of the Cricket World Cup and is known as the home of cricket. Leisure is a major part of the London economy. A 2003 report attributed a quarter of the entire UK leisure economy to London at 25.6 events per 1,000 people. Education. London is a major global centre of higher education teaching and research and has the largest concentration of higher education institutes in Europe. London has the greatest concentration of top-class universities in the world and its international student population of around 110,000 is larger than any other city in the world. Many people want London. When the Boston Consulting Group polled more than 200,000 people in 189 countries, London trounced the rest of the world when it came to where they would move to work. Unprompted, 16% of respondents said they would move to the city, well clear of New York's 12.2%. That's not entirely surprising when you look at London's demographic makeup. 3 million of London's 8 million inhabitants were born outside of the UK. In fact, the non-UK born population makes up 105% of the city's population growth between the 2001 and 2011 censuses. Why 105%? Because native Brits left, causing negative growth, and the immigrants more than eclipsed that. What's more, the Eurozone's dismal growth prospects and eye-watering rates in youth unemployment mean this trend probably isn't going to slow anytime soon. The number of people moving to the UK from the rest of Europe has increased significantly. Europe's young workforce is increasingly migrating to the UK, and a huge number seek out London. One of the most well-educated generations in history is streaming to London to live and work, and that's an enormous benefit to the city. Demography. London's diverse cultures mean over 300 languages are spoken. The 2011 census recorded that 2,998,264 people, or 36.7% of London's population were foreign-born making it the city with the second-largest immigrant population after New York, in terms of absolute numbers. 2011 census estimates, 59.8% of the 8,173,941 inhabitants of London were white, with 44.9% white British. Meanwhile 20.9% of Londoners were of Asian and mixed Asian descent. Indians accounted for 6.6%, followed by Pakistanis and Bangladeshis at 2.7% each 15.6% of London's population were of black and mixed black descent. With the British Empire being a thing for a long time, there were a lot of people from many of the colonies that wanted a slice of the so-called Commonwealth. From the 20th century onward, immigrants from Jamaica, Pakistan, India, and a host of other Commonwealth countries made their way to London to seek their fortunes. London offers a great variety of cuisine as a result of its ethnically diverse population. It is estimated that there are more Indian restaurants in London than in Indian biggest urban centers like Mumbai or New Delhi. Gastronomic centers include the Bangladeshi restaurants of Brick Lane and the Chinese restaurants of Chinatown. London was the world's largest city from about 1831 to 1925, with a population density of 325 per hectare. Environment. London is an incredibly diverse place. You may be excused for thinking there was not much space for all these Londoners, but 60% of London is open land, and 47% of Greater London is green. As well as the 3,000 parks, 142 local nature reserves, 36 sites of special scientific interest, 4 UNESCO World Heritage Sites and 2 national nature reserves within the city's limits, there are 3.8 million private gardens. In the Greater London area, around 670,000 people use a bike every day, meaning around 7% of the total population of around 8.8 .8 million use a bike on an average day. London is a forest. Yes, it may sound weird, but London is technically a forest. The capital of the UK has so many green spaces that the density of trees it has per square mile qualifies the city as a forest. The city even has its own official forestry conservator. For its size, London is one of the very greenest cities in the world. Many countries' economies are divided among different cities. The US economy is divided among different cities. 
For example, politics is centered in Washington, D.C., finance in New York City, entertainment in Los Angeles, and technology in San Francisco. The same happens in Germany, where you have cities like Berlin, Frankfurt, or Munich. And in India, you have Mumbai and New Delhi. Britain on the other hand has London, and just London. The rest of the cities are far less important for the British economy. In fact, London makes one out of every four pounds generated in the whole country. In the city you will find all the major government institutions, the banks, the technological sector, the fashion center, etc. And to this, we should add another key element, English. English is the most spoken language in the world, and the third most spoken native language in the world, after standard Chinese and Spanish. It is the most widely learned second language and is either the official language or one of the official languages in 67 countries, 27 non-sovereign entities. There are more people who have learned English as a second language than there are native speakers. As of 2005, it was estimated that there were over 2 billion speakers of English. English is the majority native language in the United Kingdom, the United States, Canada, Australia, New Zealand and Ireland. It is a co-official language of the United Nations, the European Union and many other world and regional international organizations. If you want a business trip or family vacation. From London to other major financial and tourist centers like Paris, Frankfurt, Moscow, Venice, Rome, Barcelona and Istanbul can be reached by air within four hours. If you have money, London is the best for you. With Prime Meridian and GMT from great history to modern skyscrapers. Prove that. London, the center of the world. Now a question for you. Do you agree that London is the most powerful, livable and greatest city in the world? Comment down below. I'm eager to read your opinions. Hey everyone, thanks so much for watching our video. Be sure to check out more of your Alice of over here. And leave us any other doubt in the comments section. See you soon.